I have something to admit. For over a decade, I have been the master of shielding my disappointment under a beautiful social media facade. Every time something went wrong in my life, I had to conceal all those problems by showing the world that everything was going well in my life. But I'm sure many people are doing this as a defense mechanism and protecting themselves from getting even more hurt. But in this video, I want to be sharing a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you and why it is safe for you to finally be your authentic self and live life to your fullest potential. By the way, hi, I'm Patty, and if you guys are liking my videos, please feel free to leave a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel as that will be a great help. Other than that, let's get started. The first reminder that I have for you is that life is not over just because you didn't achieve what you set your heart out to today. As a young child, I've always wanted to be in Thai entertainment and it was actually the only thing I wanted to express my creativity, wear beautiful clothes, work with talented people, and have a lot of friends that have aligned passion. But since we've moved to Australia in the year 2000, it felt like I lost connection to every single thing that would have led me to that path. But instead of us feeling disappointed by the initial rejection, it is actually much more useful to ask ourselves, if the industry doesn't choose me today, how can I choose myself today by creating exactly what I think the industry could help me create today? So we are very lucky to live in a world where internet is pretty much accessible and we can be become our own content creator. And that's why I've always been passionate about filming videos and public speaking because it feels like I can express my creativity on my own terms. So the next time you feel like, I don't feel good enough because I'm not thin enough for the modeling industry, I'm not good enough because I'm not pretty enough or talented enough for the acting industry, you always have the opportunity to still nurture your own talents by sharing your own voice voluntarily without waiting for anybody else to say, I'm an actor. I'm a singer before you embody the characteristics of one. Which leads to reminder number two, most of the friendships that you think will last for a lifetime may end the next season. And I know this sounds really, really brutal, but when we start to grow in our own ways, we start to fall out of resonance with the people who are once in our life. And of course, there are many friendships where your 10 year old childhood friend would still remain friends with you up to this day. But there are many, many times where you may have growing interest towards entrepreneurship and your friend may still want to work in corporate. And that's when your values will no longer align. And being able to accept this sooner than later will cause you less misery. This also happens the same with romantic life. Perhaps two years ago, you may find this guy being very very special in your heart you found him to be so driven and so inspiring but because you weren't that person who went after your dreams fully that's when you put him on a pedestal but the next season once you start to level up your mindset once you start to become a new person you will not see that guy the same way as you used to simply because your perspective on life has changed and that's why it's so powerful to live in a detached place because we actually don't really know who is going to stay in our life over our lifetime so so the best thing you can do is nurture the best relationship with yourself. And if that friendship is going to last a lifetime, you will never have to force it. However, if people are starting to not resonate with your new value, if people are starting to drift apart from your life, I want you to lovingly accept that fact and know that it's going to be okay and you will always have yourself at the end of your journey no matter what. Reminder three, 90% of the problems that you encounter today will not impact you the same way when the next year comes. Anything that you perceive to be as oh, this is so hard, I can't get through this, this is such a big deal, I feel so rejected. Trust me, in a year's time, once you spend 365 days really taking care of yourself, affirming new beliefs and choosing to believe that you deserve the best of the best, that same rejection, that same heartbreak, that same problem would not matter to you. It will become this minuscule memory where you look back on and realize, oh, at the time it was a very big deal because you were the version of you who pedestalizes many, many things and see one struggle as a very big problem. But as you start to mature, you will truly realize that majority of life is neutral. The problems, even though they seem drastic, are actually neutral. But how you assign your meaning, how you interpret those problems is what causes you to suffer. So let's just say you lost a whole group of friends and at the time you're experiencing this, 
it feels heart shattering. It feels like you lost your sense of self because you define your sense of self by belonging in a part of this community. But one year later, once you start to adopt new hobbies, once you start to have new passions and really work on nurturing the best relationship with you, not having this community, not having this friend group or this job or anything that wants to find you will not be a big deal. So my point to you is don't put so much emphasis on the things that you lose today. It's okay to lose that guy. It's okay to lose that friend. Seriously, because even your own self is evolving every single day. And if you are aligned to receive the best experiences from life, you will always be in resonance with better opportunities, better friendships, and better communities that are out there for you. Reminder four, the guy that once broke your heart to pieces will become your distant memory in 10 years time. And I'm actually going to even say it can happen in less than 10 years time. See, some of us get really hung up on the same guy for years and years and years. And I guess it's until our whole life phase changes completely that that guy also no longer becomes a part of our identity. For some people, it may take even four to five years for them to completely remove themselves out of that context where I really, really need that guy in order for me to have meaning in life. Because that was certainly me back in my early 20s. There are times where I would think about the same guy for four years, even though he already disappeared since the first year. And that was because I was still operating as the version of myself who didn't believe that life was abundant. If you guys have the inner identity of the person who knows, I always receive the best things. I always get chosen by every single area of life, not just in my dating life, but also in my career, then one human being is not going to shatter your identity. So let's just say you think Joe was the love of your life. You thought that there was nobody who had that soul connection with you. There was nobody else who could replace you in your heart the way that Joe can. But again, I want to remind you that most things are neutral. The guy is actually neutral. There are multiple versions of people and Joe is not just one fixed person. If you elevate yourself, even Joe, even John, even Jack will be attracted to you as long as you choose yourself first. So if you guys ever feel like my world is shattering because this guy ghosted me, he went to a different country, he started his company in somewhere else, come back and remind yourself that I have my back. I want you guys to even claim it in the comments down below. I have my back. I never abandon myself no matter who chooses to leave me. I will always stay by my own side no matter what. So no matter if Joe, Jack, John, Jim wants to disappear on me, it has no impact to me long term. And that's how I really want you to see yourself as fearless and strong and not defined or attached by anything outside of you. Reminder number five, you are worth so much more than fitting into a beauty standard. See the thing that used to really put me down was the fact that I didn't have slim legs. I didn't have an elongated body structure. And I used to associate that fact with failure in life. If I couldn't be this certain amount of height, if I didn't have this kind of leg shape, then that would make me an ugly person in entertainment. And that means that I would never get jobs that I want to get. And there were many times where I would see my family friend, let's just say, and she fits into a certain aesthetics that is deemed as pretty in Thai. I would feel like people only choose people that look like her, that have her mindset, her behavior, her confidence. But the industry would never choose me because I am not competent enough. I can't lose any more weight than this. I'm not fit enough. I don't have social skills. I don't have acting abilities. So therefore, I'll always get the jobs that I don't want to get. But the truth is that as much as your physical appearance does matter, but your energy towards any situation matters the most. Even if you don't have elongated thighs, you have the power to actually sculpt your body. You have the power to get onto a yoga mat and build your abs. That is not something that is out of your control. And even though working out every day won't make you grow to 170 centimeters tall, but what it will do for you is enhance your inner confidence. That inner confidence will then translate to a clear skin, a better posture, a better way of approaching life. And therefore opportunities will still be abundant to you even if you are beautiful in your own way. So I actually want you to be aware what makes me attractive, what makes me beautiful and solidify those habits in your life so that you always feel good in your own skin, regardless if your thigh slims down tomorrow or not. And I promise you that when you start to feel really attractive, every single part of your physique will actually change along with how you feel. So never shrink yourself down to a certain beauty standard because you don't have to force yourself to be the industry's version of beautiful in order for you to live a successful and thriving life. Six, your career path is not fixed. 
so don't fear of changing it when it feels right to you. See, it's very interesting because as a child, if you've grown up in a family where your parents prefer you to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, accountant, but you actually have a creative side within you, you will start to feel confused as to what subject should I take in university? What company should I work at during my internship? And your identity becomes kind of skewed according to what people around you want from you. But if you happen to face a time where you realize that you have a lot of creativity suppressed within you, you do have talent towards speaking or you have talent towards music, art or creating content, but you've never fully unleashed it because you were always meeting other people's expectations. I want you to be fearless about choosing that career path for yourself because at the end of the day, you are going to be the one who's going to embark on that career path years and years onwards. And this applies the same with if you always thought that you had to do consulting, but you start to develop passion for fashion. If you always felt like I have to climb the corporate ladder, but you're finding a lot of passion from your side hustle, from starting a blog, starting a YouTube channel, or starting your own side business. I want you to keep going at it in a way where it's sustainable for you. Because I honestly do believe that confidence does come from repetition. The more times you log into your account to work on your craft, the more time you trial and error and find what works for you, the more confident you become at pursuing that thing as your main career. See, fulfillment always comes from the unknown. And as long as you continually step into the unknown and embrace the experiences that comes with you getting out of your comfort zone, you will always have the best outcomes unfold for you as you won't be stagnating in your old career path. Reminder seven, adult life doesn't have to suck if you are committed to living your best life. Have you guys heard of these people around you say, oh, I've entered my 20s and I feel so old. Oh my God, 30 is so old. The best years of my life were in high school. Well, that's their perspective on life. And if people around you are choosing to dwell in the past, then that doesn't have to be the reality for you. I am a big believer in finding ways to always elevate our souls, no matter what age we are. I completely understand that 30 is older than 20 and 20 is older than 15. But all Old doesn't mean stagnant. Old doesn't mean boring. To me, I feel like the more years you are living on planet Earth, isn't it a great opportunity for you to learn about what planet Earth has to offer to you? So what I'm trying to say is that there will be many, many things that you outgrow. It doesn't matter if going to parties, having matcha ice cream or going out with friends are no longer in resonance with you. What matters the most is that you are committed to always learning new things about yourself. You are committed to up-leveling yourself, engaging activities that your child self always wanted to do do, but you neglected it because you thought you had to grow up. So these days I really love K-pop again and I really enjoy dressing up youthfully. Even though back when I was in my early 20s, I wanted to look older. So my point is just because you are 30, don't be ashamed to dress yourself up in a youthful way. Just because you are 30 or 40, don't be afraid to engage in activities where your child self would have definitely, definitely enjoyed and you still enjoy right now because those very things is what makes you feel youthful. Those very things make makes you glow and be the most radiant version of you. So as much as people say, oh, the older you get, the more your muscles hurt, the more this and that, I completely acknowledge that, but that is not going to be my reality. My reality is that the more years I live on this planet, the better everything gets. The more harmonized my life becomes, the easier things come to me, the more peace I experience and the more fun I have in life. So my question to you is, what is going to be your truth? And fearlessly decide on that. Reminder eight, the best gift that you can give to yourself is to be content with who you are. Just because you didn't achieve a certain milestone does not make you a lazy person. It is all circumstantial and depending on where you grew up, who you grew up with, what environment you were exposed to, what limiting beliefs you were exposed to. All these things will affect how you navigate your life. So if you are feeling like I'm behind now because I don't have this job or I couldn't start a business and earn six figures by 30, that is actually your interpretation of your own reality, choosing to see yourself as a failure. And what happens when you choose to see yourself as a failure? You start to feel defeated, right? But the truth is, if you don't feel like a failure, imagine how creative you would use your time. If you are choosing to believe that I'm always learning new things. I'm always becoming the best version of myself. I'm always consistent with myself. 
I always show up for myself. How would you now wisely spend your time in a way where you will always get a high investment of return? And think about it, the more you compound the number of times you work on your passion and purpose, the more you compound the number of times you uplevel your skill set. And let's just say you do this for six months straight. Wouldn't it be normal for people to start giving you contract offers, give you new job opportunities that pay you exactly what you deserve, simply because you start to believe that I am happy with who I am today, but therefore I'm still up leveling myself, but I'm choosing to up level myself from the position of me being content with where I am right now. Being content doesn't mean you stop working on your goals. Being content doesn't mean you don't want more, but being content means that I would love to have more, but in this current minute right now, everything feels okay. I'm so happy today and I'm happy working on this new goal as well. And that's how you constantly attract abundance and keep progressing because you're approaching it from the state of, I am content. Everything is good today. I feel whole today. I'm not in survival mode anymore because I choose not to be. Reminder nine, 99% of life rejection is not personal. So don't let it get to you. So during the past two years, I have made a conscious decision that no matter what happens in my life, I want to work fully on my passion and purpose. And that means that I have to reject certain people that don't align with my future. Even though that person in a general context is a great man. It doesn't diminish his worth as a person. And even if somebody rejects me, it also doesn't diminish my worth as a person. And this goes the same with job offers. Let's just say that you know you have the skill set. You have the capability to absorb anything like a sponge, but this company doesn't choose you. Instead, they choose a newbie or somebody that is less competent than you and you get pissed off about it. Well, my truth for you is that you just deserve better. You have better things aligned for you. When your ego thinks this salary package, this work style, this everything is right for me, the universe is saying that your skill sets are aligned for bigger things. So therefore, how do you want to spend 2024 dwelling in the fact that because this person says no to me, I have to feel rejected? That is not the case. The next time somebody rejects you, I want you to take yourself out of that context fully. Don't be the person in the raging storm. Take yourself out of the raging storm and see things for how it is that it is not me they're rejecting. It's actually them allowing me to have better things in life. I am now free to go and find better opportunities, better life partners, better friendships that are more suited for the current evolved version of me. The universe is clearing out every single obstacles in my way so that I go straight to where I need to be and go for the exact things that I truly deserve. Finally, number 10, you don't owe anyone anything. So walk away when you have to. Guys, it's very important that, especially if you are in your 20s, you must have the courage to walk away from things that don't serve you. It's funny because there was a phase in my life around my mid to late 20s where I was attracting people who were older than my dad, but they were rich. They were doing $30 million revenue every single year, and they had so much wisdom and so much skill sets to teach me. But as somebody who saw myself as, actually, I am attractive, it's great they teach me on the wealth mindset and everything, but I really don't want to be spending my time with people my dad's age. And that was my ultimatum that as soon as somebody makes me feel guilty for not spending time with them, especially old people, that's when you have to cut it. Do not give explanations, justifications or reasonings. If you know deep down that you are dealing with a narcissist, but you can't even detect yourself that you are dealing with a narcissist, you cannot talk your way out of that relationship. You cannot explain anything for them to stop harassing you. You must have the courage to choose what do I want in my life? How do I want to spend my weekends? How do I want to spend my week evenings? What do I want to work on? Where do I want to allocate my time and energy? So don't let people pull you back just because you think they have authority over you. If you assign the role of the authority figure to somebody who is older, a millionaire, a retiree, an older person, a boss or anything, you will always be under their wings and you do not want to live your life slaving away to other people's demands. Make sure you take your power back. Don't let people make you feel bad for not spending time with them. Don't let people make you feel like it's your responsibility that they are successful or happy because it's not your responsibility. You must take care of your self-interest. You must choose what is best for you first so that you can give out your generosity from a place of 
wholeness, not from a survival state, the obligation to have to give it. So again, guys, your life is yours. How do you choose to want to live it? If you think this boss is overbearing, if you think this job sucks, if you think all the situation sucks, please decide that this is not your life. You don't have to be here permanently. Okay, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys do, please feel free to subscribe and leave a comment. And I'm looking forward to see you soon. Other than that, see you later. Bye-bye.